Hello everyone and welcome back to my transgalactic trek in Elite Dangerous and we are... where are we exactly? Obviously I, I park it near stuff but uh, during the server reset or something like that I get tossed out in the middle of in the middle of the system I was in last and it looks like that is the case here I'm, I'm somewhere... no I, actually I'm, I'm not too far off from where I was I think Actually, I, I think this is where I left it, amazingly enough. So, good good times. Alright, so I think I had plotted for a particular star, but I don't think I have that plotted right now. Uh, it was a B-class star that I was aiming for. But anticipating that, I jotted some interesting stars down, so let me see if they're any good. So, let's see. So, uh... Uh, in lieu of bookmarks, I've decided to use index cards. Okay, is that further along here? Ooh, there's a lot of B-type stars. Is that a... Wait, hold on. No, that's an A-type. There's a blue one there, though. Come on, go away. That's a B-type. But what about this one that I've got? Oh, that is the one. Okay, good. Right. So let's go there. Whoa. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Why does it always... It should just stop sending me to economic routes. I'm sick of that. Just don't do economic routes anymore, please. Let's reset. And now we've got more more reasonable route to this B-type star. Alright, I think we can do that and then I've I spotted a few other things that I want to go to. Uh, I actually uh, made a list of star types that I want to try and hunt for. There are a lot of star types. I don't know if all the star types are in this game right now, but I'll try and look for them. If they are, then we'll head for them. No guarantees they're out there though. I mean, there are hyper giants, and uh, so I haven't seen a hyper giant, I don't think. There are wolf rayet stars. Um, there are uh, really tiny stars, too. Stars that are barely larger than Jupiter, for instance. You know, they just barely ignite or something like that. Okay, but first we are on our way to another B type. Let's. This is not the B type, obviously, but we will uh, explore this along the way. Okay, looks like we're gonna be doing some exploring around here. What does it? Well, I. I no, it looks like uh, bell clusters, aren't they? I just gotta say, I don't want to look at the system map because I want to be surprised by the planet types. But uh, if it's just bell clusters, it's just bell clusters. Yeah. Just belt clusters. Alright. So, uh, on that, I will take care of the belt clusters off camera and then I'll meet you back when we move on to the next star. Okay, I think uh, we are good for this sector and we can proceed to the B type star that we were aiming for. I did some unexpected fuel scooping on the way to one of the belt cluster segments. So. Yeah, I might have taken a little bit of heat damage on that too, I don't know. But uh, anyway, let's continue. Yeah, I accidentally got let the heat levels get to about 140% while on my way to a belt cluster there. I couldn't really pull out of that in time. So, yep, hopefully that didn't do too much damage. Okay, nothing too interesting around here, I guess. Let's see if there are other stars, though. Oh, there are. And they're sort of like that. Okay, uh, G type star. G type star should be pretty reasonable to spot if it's not on the other side of this thing.
bow. Well, those two sure stand out. Let me just take a quick look around. Well, yep, they do stand out. Let's head for them. So yeah, uh, just a reminder, of course the goal of this is to cross the galaxy, or at least get to the other side of it, which means going across the galactic center. And I fully in, uh, think that I can achieve that. That's not a far-flung goal. It's not quite like Kurt J. Max Far Lands or Bust, even though that was the model. I, I do actually expect to do it in a reasonably decent amount of time. And uh, so the whole discovery process and uh, exploration is is sort of uh, icing on the cake if you will the goal is to get across and so there are gonna be times when I think I'm wasting too much time hanging around a system and the primary goal has to take precedence in that case so just be aware of that now in this case with this hauler I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get across the galaxy or not uh, this is such a basic ship we don't have all the equipment we should have had and and there is a chance that I'll just be blown out of the water if you will so yeah not entirely sure this will be the ship I'll do it in but I'm not uh, I'm not averse to long-term goals I have written a few novels in my time so it's like uh, multi-year things projects are not, not out of the question by any means so that's the idea here. Of course I'm saying that because if it turns out that these stars that I'm headed for are too far away or I think that they're not the real thing, probably they're the real thing but they're just too far away, I might just head on to the next system because uh, I want to do things in a certain amount of time and I don't want to dawdle. Anyway, speaking of which, let me see about the next system I wrote down. I wrote down a uh, Hipparchus uh, 89659 there. And yeah, that's uh, that's reasonably, that's the right direction. That'll get us further in. We're about 625 now and that'll get us close to 640 or past 640. And that's another, oh, what, what type is that? Yeah, that's another B-type star. So we'll have uh, been to three B-type systems in a row. Uh, okay, no, I didn't want to target it, though. But whatever, uh, let's just continue in this. Uh, I would like to know how far away from the core star I am, though. Ah, we're not that far yet. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll be back with you once we either get closer or I decide to abort this attempt to reach these stars. Up oh, and just when I say that, it looks like we are slowing down, so so actually they're a lot closer than I might have thought they were, and we are definitely experiencing some gravitational influence now. So yep, yeah, once we uh, get there, I will uh, update you with our exploration progress. Okay, here we go. Uh, the orangish star is drifting away. This looks like the G-type that we're heading for right now. They're relatively close together. It won't be hard to spot the other star once we've taken care of this G-type. Okay, two new objects discovered. Okay, well that take, takes care of this one. And I don't think it has anything else around it, otherwise we probably would have pinged that. There's the other star, and that is the other unexplored thing we've got here. Now, since this was relatively further out, maybe I should give it another ping to see if there's anything else around it as we get closer to it. Okay, here we go. Nope, nothing interesting here, it looks like. Or at least nothing close by. So next system. We look to be in the B92 sector which is good so we've uh, changed sectors again. You gotta see a whole lot of B92 I take it. Ok, 
Okay, slow down. And let me scan this one. Wow, it's so jittery when loading the system map these days. Oh, looks like it's just all alone here. But it might have some planets, so let's give a ping for that. Something this big shouldn't be all alone, come on. Well, that's one thing. Must be a planet, I hope it's a planet. Let's get out there. A single planet for a big snarl like this? Actually, how big is it? It's a good question. Ah, it's 11 solar masses, 11 times the mass of our sun. Less radius though, which is why it's so hot and bright. Okay, anyway, here we go. Okay, uh, another anarchic system. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, about Earth-sized. Let's swing by it. I've got one more system written down, but I don't know how far this next one is. It's not a B-type. It's, uh, it's, it's different, very different. And I want to see how different it turns out to be. But yeah, at the end of the previous episode, I did some navigation map perusing to hunt for some interesting st stars for this episode, so I wouldn't have to do it all at the beginning of this time. Certainly helps to get us a little further along, I suppose. That's interesting. Looks different than it was on the system map, doesn't it? And there's this, these yellow and orange speckles. It looked very gray on the system map. I don't know, it looks sort of rusty. Maybe volcanic? Possibly. Anyway time to hunt for our next sector. So, the next one I had written down was something called B92. Well, at least that's should be in the neighborhood. Sector UPE A12-2. Oh, UPE A12-2. Okay, well that's not too far away. What kind of star are you? Y0V. So, Y seems to be the smallest type. I wanted to see that. Yeah, and that'll guess for long. As you can see, that's around the 660 mark there. So, alright, good. A good sequence of stars I picked out to start this thing off. Expediting our exploration. So, according to Wikipedia, which I decided to look at for star types, the Y-type stars have a temperature of less than 600 Kelvin, which is pretty low. I mean, in other words, I think my oven goes hotter than these stars do. Which is quite something to say. And uh, there were question marks about whether they should have even been uh, considered a, a type of star. Oh yeah, this this is very... this I have not seen. Yeah, okay. Good, 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 good. I was hoping it would be something new like this. So this is, this is basically a super Jupiter, isn't it? Uh, barely lit up. And there's like a dozen of these that have actually been found. And they're not entirely sure whether it should be a star type or not but it's provisionally a Y-type star. Uh, they're sort of like between brown dwarfs and planets. Let's see if it's got anything around it. I mean, Jupiter's got a bunch of moons after all, so maybe this thing's got some... Well, it's got something. Something pretty far out, too. It's not exactly a moon. Would have liked to see something a little bit closer. Don't know about these. What is? What does this line signify? This this line around it, right there, that greenish line. Don't know about that. Okay, uh, the unex 
board thing is out there. Hopefully it won't get too hot this time. Heck, this thing isn't even... Uh, ooh, heat level's critical even though uh, it's not as hot as my oven, okay? Actually, let's see his description to see if I was... I'm... If they agree with Wikipedia on this. So they say class Y dwarfs are the coolest of the brown dwarfs. Surface temperatures are less than 700 Kelvin, they say. So that's uh, less than 400 degrees Celsius. And are effectively very large gas giant planets with some stellar properties. Okay, you can see its mass and radius really tiny. Really old though, 12 billion years. Uh, sort of a grandpa compared to our own sun. Sort of surprising, it's listed as a Y0V, which means it's a main sequence star, not a sub dwarf or, a, or something like that. Okay. Well, what does this look like? It looks small. Let's see. Uh, what sort of information does the system map give on this? Okay, ice world, composed mainly of water ice. Had much heating in the past. Uh, Earth-like radius, orbit period very long because the gravity of this star is very low, even though it's not that far away from it. It's uh, less than the distance from Earth to the Sun. Axial tilt, it's, pr it's uh, practically reversed. So it's actually spinning the opposite direction, yeah. Okay, I think I've seen this sort of planet before. So no biggie. Okay, so now we're off of my list. I don't have any more stars listed. Let's take a look at this galaxy map. So we are at uh, 660 here. Uh, that one looks promising. Oh, that's an F-type. I'm through with F-types. I think we can do better than F-types, right? Maybe not. Um, let's see, that's far away from the center line of this whole thing. Oh, that's another Y-type. There's actually a lot more Y-types here than they have actually found, but then again, I, I guess that makes sense, because we wouldn't have found many of them. They're not exactly bright. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I've seen... Well, there's two T's in a row. I don't know if I've gone by many T-type stars. I know we've we've done T-Tori type stars, but not T-type stars. Oh, well, there's a... No, that's not what I see. I see a little purple speck here. It's still... Okay, that one, yeah. A-type star. Right. Okay, and then so we'll hit... Uh, I think, is that a T-type star on the way? Yes, it is. Okay, so we'll hit a T-type and then an A-type. Ah, well, this T-type looks a lot like the Y-type stars. Should be a little bit hotter. Let's see the system map. Okay, uh, and as it has in Wikipedia, 700 to 1300 Kelvin, sometimes known as methane dwarfs due to the promise, prominence of methane in their composition, in their spectral lines, in other words. And so we've got uh, a real gas giant here, and burning methane out of all things. Uh, natural gas, just a bubble of it. Okay, so we've uh, searched it like that. Pile South doesn't have anything. All right, let's let's see if we can scoop some fuel from it. I don't know if there's much fuel to be had on a on a star like this. I don't think we. I guess we can't fuel up with methane, right? Well, we're pretty hot here, and I'm not getting any fuel, so I'm guessing that this is not the type of star that we can fuel up with. Not a huge surprise. Okay. Let's actually move on to the next thing before 
really gets me on heat and it's already getting how can it be getting this hot look I sit right next to a type stars and and that's no problem this thing is barely hot at all shouldn't even be damaging my craft at 600 to 1300 Kelvin I mean come on but but there it goes something wrong about that okay and here we go for the A type star Okay, so unexplored, let's solve that. System map tells me it's just on its own. Fairly young star. Not that big for uh, A-type. And in fact, uh, it's, a, it's got a 6 there, A86, and this 6 actually labels it as a subdwarf. Even though it's bigger than our own sun, it's classified lower because it's small for uh, A-type. Okay, so let's give a pulse out, but then I have to do some fuel scooping. Yep, nothing much there. Let's cautiously get close. Fuel scooping. You know, that's an interesting little coronal ejection going on right there. Looks like something serious, actually. I've been uh, paying attention to it. It's sort of been... It spewed out some stuff. I haven't really appreciate how uh, how active the corona is sometimes on these stars. They've done a good job on that. Okay, so we're at uh, 688 or thereabouts. And we are pretty low on our Y coordinate. Well, just to get us a little bit higher up, because I'd feel better about that. Maybe, maybe actually in this direction would be better. Lots of red stars. Now we've been we've been granted some nice blue stars recently. But now it's throwing up a whole lot of red stars. Well, I guess we can swing by another T-type first. Get a little bit higher, a little bit closer to the center line. And then we'll proceed from there. T-type is the least valuable, I suppose. Okie dokie. It's probably worth only a few cents, but let's explore this this very dim star. And check its system map. It won't have another star next to it, I don't think. Nah. Uh, well, while we're here, let me plot for the next system. Maybe looking for a red supergiant would be nice. We've had a few of those, but always nice to swing by a super giant. Huh. Have we gone to an else type? I don't remember. We're just so ooh, wait, wait, there's a nice one there. That's a B type. Let's go there. Always attracted by the shiny ones. But that'll get us pretty low down again. We're definitely deep into the negative Y territory as we head for these B types for some reason. Ooh, wow, it gets hotter. Why do you get hot around these tiny little stars, huh? 121%, come on. Four, three, two, one, 
Okay, another tiny star that'll probably overheat us for no apparent reason. Ooh, it's got three companions of some kind. It's a Y type. They're a fair distance away, so I don't know if they're asteroid belts or not. Nope, looks like planets of some kind. Okay, let me get around it safely though. It's gonna try and heat us up, I'm sure. Okay, let's take a closer look at what this is. It's only 898 kilometers. It's sort of like a series, sort of dwarf planet kind of thing. We haven't had many potato shaped planets. I don't think I. I mean, we've had some slight lumps on planets, but uh, nothing totally like uh, Phobos or Deimos like potato shaped. This is probably too big to be potato shaped. Ceres in our asteroid belt is also quite round. And this is pretty round too. Could do with some irregularly shaped planets. That would be nice to see. Or at least moons. Certainly moons. We could have some irregularly shaped things. And heck, if Kerbal Space Program can have irregularly shaped moons, I don't see why they couldn't toss a few in here in Elite Dangerous. Certainly it's realistic. Uh, there are such moons or even planets in real life. So, would like to see some of that. Maybe they are, they are in here and I just haven't found them. That's always a possibility. Oh, wow. Uh, how big is this? Oh, no, it's 1,144. I thought it was just going to be 144. So, this is a fair size one, too. Probably still round. Yep, not a particularly interesting shape there. Okay. One more to go. Oh, unidentified signal source. I better run away from that, whatever it is. Not interested in getting any fights, and that's pretty much the only reason why things would be spawned at this point, right? Okay, another 894. Not much by way of variation in this system, I must say. Does this one even look like the same sort of planet? Oh, uh, roughly. Roughly the same sort of look. Heck, just to verify, let me just take a look at the system map quickly. Yeah, wow, they, they look exactly alike, don't they? Peas in a pod. Close maiden of water ice. They say the same thing. They're the same kind of thing. Okay, well, what can you do? Don't know if that's how it works or not, but... We aren't done with this system. Let us continue on to that B-type I was aiming for. Okay, B-type star. With all the B-type stars we've been trying to hit, uh, you'd think they were common. They are not. Though I haven't even seen a hint of an O-type yet, which is much, much rarer. Okay, no other star nearby, it looks like. Very young star. Okay. Wow, really nothing around. Okay, let me take a look. How far along are we now? Looks like we're like 735 light years in. How far along can we plot? Well, we can plot till there. We plot to this one? Yeah. That's doable. Maybe like 50 light years or so. Uh, a little bit more than 50 light years, it looks like. I, I, I'm sure it depends on the connections that we can see, but in practical terms, about 50 light years. VZ. What's a VZ? That's an interesting one. And two T Tauri type stars. We can't plot for that one yet. Well, at 62 light years, it's pretty far for something we can plot to. I think I'll go with that. 
Looks like we won't take too many jumps. They're all long jumps, though. It's going to be quite a stretch. T-types. Now we got all sorts of T-type stars that we're hitting. But we'll jump right through them to get to there. All right. And I think uh, we'll probably leave it at that sector. Unfortunately, there won't be anything too uh You know, maybe I should fuel up here. We're less than half of a tank, and we've got long jumps ahead of us. Okay, all done. Okay, a brief attempt at discovery here, hopefully. Don't want to linger. And indeed, nothing to linger about. Okay, another one of these. Pulse out. Okay. Right. T type star done. Proceeding to that. Oh no, how are we going back to the COL359 sector? I thought we were well and truly done with that. Let me just make sure we're not like doing something completely stupid here. Wow, we're, we're definitely measurably closer to the galactic center than, than we used to be. I mean, you can see Sol is all the way back there. We're close to a thousand light years in now. Well, that's satisfying. Okay, uh, let's see. But this... I really didn't want to get back to the COL359 sector. That's the last place I want to be. Find me some better sector in Parrot's Head. Yes, Parrot's Head would be good. Uh, that's backwards. Um, I'll have to take a better look at this whole thing some other time. Uh, after I finish recording this session, I'll take a look and try and find some other neat stars to head to. For now, we'll just head to our planned location. So, yep, it is, uh, it's an okay star that we're headed for. It's, uh, F-type. Not too shabby, and it's within sp spitting distance of 800 light year. 800 light years into the galaxy, so that is also a good place. I think we would have covered uh, close to 200 light years in this episode, so hopefully I've been able to cut it down to a good size for your viewing pleasure. Off we go. Uh, wait, let me let it cool down a little bit first. Alright, engage. Drive charging. Three, two, one, engage. Okay. Are you gonna be a good fruitful star? Let's find out. Up oh, for new astronomical objects, so that's a good start. F-type star as expected, but let's see about other stars nearby. No, whoa. Now I've seen a lava plant before, but I haven't seen one in a while. And it looks close, doesn't it? Uh, its orbital period is 2.1 days. It's about Earth-sized, but it's much, 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 much closer. Orbiting the sun in two days. Wow. Okay, let's uh, let's head for that. It must be this closest one then, huh? No wonder is it's a lava planet. Well, I, I guess I don't know if that is necessarily true. It could be just scorched like uh, 
Mercury is. We don't even have to go away from the star in order to explore it, but let's go towards it a bit more. Unintentional fuel scooping. Oh, and overheating. Okay, so uh, I'll go ahead and explore the asteroid belts, but I think I'm gonna park my ship near this lava planet in order to end the episode. So I will do that right now, and I'll come back to you once I make the conclusion. Okay, heading back for the lava planet here. And so, even though I didn't expect to find anything interesting to park at at the end of this episode, the galaxy has provided. We have this lava planet to to conclude with, and so I will take this opportunity. Like I said, we made it about 200 light years further in. We are now at 800 light years in, which is about uh, 60th of the way to the galactic core. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'll continue to try and keep up this pace, in which case, what, it'll take not too long. Not too long. A lot of episodes, but not, not outside of the realm of possibility. Okay, so parking it here. Maybe deflect it a little bit. Alright. So yeah, uh, with that, uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.